Oh, yeah, there we go. You can see that? All right. I can see it. Just there give me go. the old, just give me the old next slide whenever you're ready. Will do. Thank you. Um, good morning, everyone. I am Luann Grimm. Can everyone hear me okay? Do I need to adjust my mic? Are we good? Sounds good. Okay, wonderful. Um, I do feel like I should start with a couple of disclaimers policies. One, it's Spirit Week, and I am in some Wednesday Adams clothing. So I'm it's homecoming week here in Oakwood. Um, I am also battling seasonal allergies, which also seems to happen during homecoming week a lot. So if I get choked, I apologize. I'll try to get rid of the camera so none of you have to witness that. Um, there is obviously just no good angle for my webcam. I have elevated monitors and it's down about where it could be. Um, and I was kind of a late minute addition. There was a cancellation. I jumped at the chance to do this. It's something I'm passionate about. Uh, so just please bear with me if you want to flip to the next one, please. Um, I always do this general disclaimer. Guys, I've, I've been doing this 17 years. Um, I have gathered my ideas from different places and different people. I always try to give credit where credit is due. Um, so if I mess up, it is not intentional. And I, you can ask me and I'll always try to get those resources to you. Um, okay, you want to go ahead and flip to the next one, please? Um, I like to tell people, this is what many people think we do. We're either sitting there telling people to be quiet or we're shelving. I feel like we're always shelving. Um, and the third one in particular, I realized, especially today, I do kind of echo that picture a little bit and I didn't mean to. Um, but we all know that's not actually what we do or what we want to do. Um, if you wanna flip to the next one, please. Um, I am very passionate that we are not just materials and spaces. We are a living, breathing, collaborative learning environment. And what that looks like in each of your schools is going to be different. Um, I was junior high for many years. They have absorbed our junior high into our grade school. So I am now grade school. Um, but we've had a very fluid relationship. So I've been in all the libraries in our district. Um, and I, I feel like I should say I am an ESP. We do not have a certified uh, district librarian any longer. So we have ESPs in each of our buildings, and we actually still have two here now in the grade school. <laughs> Homecoming week, got to love it. Um, so what the library looks like in your building might not be the same as what it looks like in my building. Um, it might not look like it's the same, you know, at the high school or even in different grade schools. So the first thing we need to ask, um, an ESP is an educational support personnel. So we are not certified staff. Um, I saw that question down there in the group and I'll try to catch those as they come up. Um, I do have a sub certificate. Our other librarians, we are technically called library assistants here, even though the kids laugh and they say, who are you assisting? Because you're it. Um, they do not have sub certificates. I actually have a sub certificate, which is nice. It enables me to go in the classroom and enables me to provide instruction. Um, so that's kind of a, a nice touch there. Um, next slide, please, Dan. Uh, the first thing that I think you need to decide before you can decide what resources you need are, what do you want your library to be? Like, what do you want it to be? Um, I knew going in, I was already involved at this in the school. I was very active in PTO. Um, I like to tell people I used to have a real job. I was boss. And so it allowed me a certain amount of flexibility. When they asked, I was actually asked to apply for the job when it opened because they were like, we know you love kids. We know you love books. This will be a good fit for you. And I went in and I realized this was not what I wanted my library to be. You know, they saying you can't see the forest for the trees. You couldn't see the library for the books. There were so many books and they were not age appropriate. I mean, not that they were bad or anything, but like we had, I don't know how many shelves of cookbooks and not kid cookbooks, not easy snacks after school cookbooks, like adult dry cookbooks. And we oftentimes had a big hardback and a soft edition, also paperback. 
So the first thing I did was start ripping stuff out. The kids couldn't come in and sit at the tables because they were so crammed together. There were approximately 2007 filing cabinets, um, which my old library before we moved to the new building, I had wall to wall storage in closets. So I just, I went in and I just started getting rid of stuff um, because I realized I didn't want an archive. I wanted a library. I wanted the kids to be able to come in. And that was the next part. What do you need your, what do your students need it to be? It wasn't going to do me any good to have my dream room if nobody came to it. If the teachers weren't comfortable there, that was one of the first thing I got from the teachers. Luann, please, could you make it so we can actually use the library? And so that's how I approached it. That's what worked for me. Your guys' needs um, might be different. Uh, next slide, please, Dan. Um, so the first thing I tell people is you have to advocate. Um, and I use the word sell. I hate to use it, but it's what you have to do. You have to sell your vision to the students, the staff, admin, school board, community, local businesses. Um, I always tell people have an elevator speech ready, and I like to have two. Uh, the first one is for what my vision for our library is, and then the second one is a wish list of items. Um, I don't know how many of your districts have a curriculum coordinator. We have an amazing and supportive curriculum coordinator. Her, her name's Michelle Kimbrough. And I don't know if any of you have been around long enough to remember there was an E2T2 grant. It was a technology grant that came out several years ago. And we allocated all our money. We got stuff. Um, the government basically got a hold of my curriculum coordinator and said, hey, some of the other school districts didn't spend all their money. If you can submit everything to us in the next 24 hours, you may have it. But there were very specific things. And so she called me and she says, oh, my gosh, what's a wish list of more electronic items? And that's how we bought our first e-readers. We bought Kindles. Um, and because I had that information ready, I was able to pull it up. We got all the forms filled out. So always have a wish list or that elevator speech. I can't tell you how many times I've been at a community event and a parent or a, a business has come up to me and said, hey, is there anything you need? We've got this extra money. I, I will tell somebody in a hot minute. Yes, absolutely. This is what I need. And I just, sometimes I keep it on an index card in my drawer. Other times I just keep it at the back of my mind. Um, how did I create my elevator speech? I basically went through and wrote a wish list. And guys, it can be as simple as keep an Amazon wish list ready. Um, luckily, I obviously have no problems talking. Um, and I also don't know a stranger. So... I just always have one in my mind. So if somebody does stop me and say, well, what do you want the library to be? I can tell them and I'll go into more on that with you guys in the next slide, what I wanted my library to be. And that's what worked for my school. Um, the picture on this page, I know it seems kind of funny. I have lots of stuff, but this is one of my kind of resources. All the little Marvel figurines in the first, those were gifted to me by high school kids after they went on because they know I like Marvel. I like a lot of things, but they know I like Marvel. And they were all working at McDonald's. And I had gone through with my granddaughters and I said, oh, which one do you have? They made sure that I had each of them and sent them here to the library for me to display in the library. That's a little resource, but it's an important one. Um, is it still cutting out? Hopefully, okay. All right, Dan, next slide, please. Um, this was a bunch of pictures that I can't click through because I don't have control of it anymore. Um, but my goal was to be the heart of the school. I love books. I want kids to love books. I want kids to read, but we are also used as a reward center. Um, it can get pretty hot and heavy. Sometimes we'll do like a coin war to raise money. One year we did it to buy books for disadvantaged students in a neighboring school district. And the reward would be a day in the library. Um, and that's a big deal here. If a kid does well in class and they master something, they come to the library. I have staff, ESPs especially, that don't always have their own station, will come into our station. Well, they'll come in here to do an online training or to check their email. Um, so that was our goal, was we wanted to be the heart of the school. And I think we've accomplished that. 
Um, we did move last year to a new building. It's taken some getting used to. The room's a little smaller, but you know we're figuring it out. Um, next slide, please, Dan. So you've decided what you want your library to be. Now what or who has time for that? Because I don't know about you guys, but I feel like I never have time to get everything accomplished sometimes. Um, and that's where the resources come in. Um, if you want to go ahead and click to that next page, Dan, I finally decided the easiest way for time constraints, because I was a little late to this party, was to do a list. And now I have to apologize because I realized, Dan, I left Rails off. I also left off the Illinois Library Association. But I'm just going to kind of start at the top, work my way down, and tell you how I used these resources, how it worked best for me. Um, Amazon. One, obviously, I shop there. I get lots of things from there for the library, and it comes fast. I enjoy that. It saves me time. But also their reviews, especially their verified reviews. I like to go on a blurb on the back of a book or by a publisher is great. I want the people that have really read it um, or gifted it to that grandkid or to say, yes, this is age appropriate. Um, I do try to read the books that come into my library. But sometimes there's just not time to read them all. Um, so I do like to use Amazon as that resource just to read. Will you leave up the Google Docs? For, okay, that one's not for me. Sorry. Um, like I said, not only for shopping, but for reviews. Um, American Library Association, and I did include the email addresses on the slides. Um, I feel that one's pretty obvious. I know that when we did our bill of rights and we did our challenge policy years ago um, we got a lot of guidance from the american library association on how to do that um, and what's so funny is i've been in the district long enough that most people don't even know we have those policies on file there was an issue a couple years ago with a teacher and that a book was being challenged i'm like no we have a challenge policy um, so they have invaluable resources links all right there available um, I have never been able to go to anything. It keeps freezing. Okay. I apologize if it keeps freezing. If anybody has any questions afterwards, please feel free to email me, text me. I think I included my number on the last slide. Luann, it's not, it's not freezing for me. I'm not sure if I, what uh, people are saying in the comments, but it seems to be, uh, okay. seems to be fine. Okay. I did wired instead of wireless, hoping that it would help. Um, Staff members Excuse me, they're the making an announcement. Uh, <laughs> we're having training right now and I'm missing it, but I'll be there later. Um, the Association of Illinois School Library Educators, IELTS. I don't know if any of you have ever been um, to their workshops that they put on. They're having one next month. It's the beginning of October in Champaign. They usually move it. They'll go upstate one year and then back towards central Illinois. I don't know if they ever do it in Southern Illinois. I don't know where everybody's coming in from. Um, my lights just turned, we have motion lights now. I stayed still too long. Um, it is an excellent resource. They have various speakers. You can pick which sessions you wanna go into. They'll have vendors set up. Um, that's actually where I learned about the book binding machines that we ended up getting for our district, not only for our library, but we ended up getting a larger one and we use for our textbooks because we still do have some textbooks, even though we are one-to-one -one on devices now. Um, book list webinars, and this will go for book list, Penguin, uh, Publishers Weekly, Scholastic, and especially School Library Journal. Um, I got on their email list and I don't know if anyone else does it, but they send out free online webinars. And the cool thing is, is even if you can't do it then, after it's done, they will send you a link and then you can do it on your own time. Um, so like what I do is snow days. They changed our snow day policy and we have, we do um, like e-learning days now. So we have to find something to do. So I can always pull up a webinar and I can prove I do it. It gives me a certificate. Um, they're fabulous. And I can kind of pick and choose and I can do it on my time. If I have downtime on a training day, 
I can do it then. If I'm sitting at a ball game, I can do it then. And there are so many different topics. You can get topic. You can get it on genres in your library. You can get it on how to attract young readers. Um, there, I mean, there's just a ton of them. And what I do is I just park them in a folder in my email. Who gives the webinars? So that would be, I do book list. Um, Penguin will offer some, Publishers Weekly, and School Library Journal. And you should be able to go to their website and get on a mailing list. They, I get usually, I don't know, I get at least a handful every week from the different ones. And sometimes I just leave them plain while I'm in the library, even if I'm doing other things. Um, Demco. I, too, I know in the last session, um, I used the genre stickers from Demco. Um, and sometimes I just go there and look at their ideas and do my own thing. But it is a good place to go and get ideas. And I do like their products. I'm not pitching for them. They don't pay me any money. I just, I do like their products. Um, Illinois Heartland Library System. I can't tell you how many times I have reached out to Leah Gregory with a question. Um, they tried to kind of cut our hours this year of actually being in the library. And there was an issue with that because we had to have a minimum. They are a great resource to reach out and ask questions of. Um, Pinterest. Now, that being said, I don't go on Pinterest a whole lot because I will go down a black hole and never come out. It, uh, it'll be retirement time and I will look up and say, oh my gosh, I got sucked into Pinterest. Um, but I do use it. I You can't see it behind me, but I have a lot of Harry Potter stuff in my library, um, and I love their ideas there. Same thing with um, Teacher Pay Teacher, which also did not make my list. We do Teacher Pay Teacher here. I got some really cool um, Harry Potter things off of there that just reinforce the school-wide initiatives that we have, and I have found the kids love Harry Potter, from the little kids up to the big kids. Um, teacher pay teacher is blocked. Oh, that's awful. We, uh, we have our individual accounts, but then our curriculum coordinator, she, we tell her what she, we want and she uses grant money to buy it. So I got a whole thing of the educational decrees like Dolores Umbridge, but it was actually suited to our school-wide behavior initiative. So I have one whole wall that's plastered in that. Um, and I didn't have to pay for it our curriculum coordinator paid for that. That goes back to those resources. Um, people are resources. That's, that's our next slide, but I'm not there yet. Um, Publishers Weekly, I touched on it. Um, Riff, reading is fundamental. I can remember distinctly the first book I got from Riff when I was little, and that was a very long time ago. Um, and it was The Velveteen Rabbit, and I still have that copy. And Riff came around in the schools and they gave out a book, but they offer a lot of online resources, same thing, webinars. Um, they are a good source. Scholastic. I, I used to do book fairs. I don't do them as much because I'm in the upper grade part and there's just not enough stuff. But the lower grade, we still do it. Um, and we actually did contact them and say, hey, can you send some stuff for our seventh and eighth graders and even like our sixth graders some of the stuff they just, you know, they start thinking they're grown. Some of the stuff is just too young. Um, so the book fairs are a good resource, but they also offer trainings. I've been to them in person and online. They offered a training at a hotel over in Champaign. I'm not very far from Champaign-Urbana. Um, so we were able to go over and they had lots of resources there on how to utilize your library, uh, bring in a maker space, all kinds of different things. Um, school library journal. We talked about that. Um, and YouTube. YouTube does a lot of things. Um, one, you can look up just about anything on how to do something and you can find a video that shows you how to do it. But the other thing that I use YouTube for are book trailers. So I, it's, it's not as easy in this new library. They, they reach out to Illinois Heartland a lot too. Sorry guys, I'm doing comments and my thing. Um, at my old building, I had a little more room. So I had a dedicated uh, monitor that just played book talks all day from YouTube, or it would have, you know, here, uh, Pete the cat, it will have videos for Pete the cat. And I just kind of have it playing in the background. 
and the kids seem to enjoy it. It'll get them interested in it, give them some ideas. Um, so YouTube works well for that. Um, I don't do a lot of social media stuff and put stuff out there, but occasionally we have recorded videos. We do have a YouTube for the library. Um, different grants, we've had to do some things that there'll be a requirement about something for the media. We'll put it to there. Same thing, that's about the only thing I use Twitter for. I don't have enough time for all that and I'm really, the kids laugh at me. I just don't get it. I'd just rather talk. Um, but these are probably the links that I use the most because you can find training and, and you can see I put best in quotations. Once again, a best practice for me might not be the best practice for you. Everybody's needs are different. So you, it's determining those needs and those wants first and then deciding how to fill it is what I found works best. Uh, next slide, please, Dan. When I saw the topic for this session, I did start with like this kind of resource, more library management, um, how to organize webinars, book reviews. But then I really thought about it and about how many of my resources come from other more non-traditional places. Um, so I always say never underestimate the usefulness of a minion. I do student council. And so my kids have been, I call them minions. That's what I've always called them. Or also known as ask for help. Um, especially at the grade school level, most of the parents there, y'all know they are new. They are happy. They've got some energy left in life because they don't have teenagers, a lot of them yet. And they want to be in school and they want to come help you. So allowing them to come help you in a way that is truly helpful is going to be based on what you need. Um, so if you, let's just go back to genreizing the library you get your books divided up, you can have them, you can show them how to come in and sticker and recategorize all of them or how to change it. I use Destiny. So we had to go in and I'm still not done. I'm not kidding. I'm, I, I feel like I will never be done recategorizing from when we went to genres, but we'll just go in on Destiny and start updating where the books are because we just changed the spine label record. There's just a lot of books to do that too. Um, if you want to flip to the next screen, please, Dan. Um, these are some of the things, the picture at the bottom, I, it may be a little hard to tell what it is. Those are Lego cards. So one, we had a surplus of audio visual equipment after everything went to Promethean boards and smart boards. So I went and took a bunch of the old AV carts and I made like the little Lego table. Uh, Destiny is our online cataloging system. So all of ours is digital, it's web-based, and we do it through Follett. And that's how we um, code our books, we barcode them. Um, it's just our online cataloging system. So the big green, those are literally Lego, and I don't even think those are Lego. I think they were an off-brand, once again, I found at Amazon. Um, but I made a Lego cart, and you can see this says, thank you, Oakwood Men's Club. We have a local men's club. They will only ever give $250 at a time, but you can go every month and ask for $250 and they will give it to you if you need it. Um, the men's club paid for my Legos and the pictures on my screen, it's to the right, shows some of the different Lego kits that they paid for. Oh yeah, there's my big green sheets. Um, they're Brickyard brand. The middle picture above the Legos, I bought pencil boxes. Uh, we divided some of the Legos out, but we actually use these. I like to do a lot of cross-curricular stuff. This is another resource. So in um, social studies class, if they're learning about something, let's say in the Civil War, we've had kids actually reenact how they would set up their camp or what they would do using Legos. We've had them use them in math class and science class, and they have made obstacle courses on their sheet. And I got those pencil boxes when they were on clearance at Walmart for like 10 cents because someone called me and said, Luhan, they have pencil boxes for 10 cents. You're always wanting something like this. Worked out well. Legos on the top donated by a family that knew I wanted Legos. Um, thought I was going to help you write grants. Um, no, but we will talk about the grants. 
that's where like the community groups and things come in. Is that what the original thing was, was grant writing? Dan? No, and actually we have a session coming up about that at the very end. So. Um, oh, okay. Thank you. Cause I thought I really dropped the ball and I was going to pivot really fast. You did not. Um, <laughs> okay. Your local public library is a great resource. Ours, we're very lucky. It's two blocks down the road. And I, until last week was actually president of our local public library. Our public library made a policy years ago that anybody in our district could have a free library card so that they could have access to all kinds of resources through them. Um, they give us, if they have a surplus of books, they give us first dibs on them. And that saves a lot of money in our budget. Uh, parents, grandparents, families, they'll hear a need, we put it out on social media. The cabinet over on the other side of the screen, when we moved buildings, I lost a display case. I was looking for one, the person knew what I wanted it for and they donated that to me to have a display case in the library, which as you can see houses some of the Harry Potter stuff. Your regional office of education, ours does. They offer kits that you can use in your library, um, things that you can try out. Lots of times they'll have book sets you can borrow. Um, so always reach out to your regional office of education and then social media. Put it out there to the parents and say, this is what we need. This is what we're looking for. That is allowed in our district. I know some districts may not allow that. Um, I didn't really leave a whole lot of time for questions, so I apologize for that. If you go to the next slide, I did put my email address, our district's website. Um, I don't use my Weebly anymore, but it's still up there as an example. And then I did put my Twitter handle, even though I don't really use Twitter. I've used it for when I've had to apply for a grant um, and put things out there, Follett will do grants. We did get like a $20,000 Monsanto grant, um, which was super cool. My work number is there and my cell phone. Um, please feel free to reach out to me. I am happy to talk to you. If I can arrange a visit or anything to help, happy to do that. Um, and if anybody has any very quick questions in the little bit of time that I left you, uh, <laughs> let me know. Yeah, we got we got about one minute. Let me just say, if you have questions, uh, you know, feel free to raise your hand. I want to say that uh, Luann was <laughs> so someone had to unfortunately withdraw from giving this presentation, and Luann very graciously stepped in. We gave her about a week of of uh, of uh, of of notice to to design this presentation to come up with it, and she did everything I wanted her to do. So thank you so much, Luann. That was that was awesome. Um, and I also just like love the image of you at a ball game watching a bookless webinar. I, that, that is that's in my brain right now. So I do uh, student council, so I'm here a lot. So <laughs> I just do it all. Do it all.